How is it going, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another episode of the Sick Podcast with your host, that Leafs fan. Before we get into today's episode, recapping the past, or should I say, first two Leafs preseason games, I just want to take this moment to acknowledge all of you guys who supported in the first episode, whether you listen on Spotify, YouTube, Apple Podcasts, wherever you listen to it, wherever you listen to it from. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Without further ado, let's get the next episode started. Producer, roll the tape. Turn up your volume. Because you're about to listen to The Sick Podcast. With that Leafs fan. They score! They score! Holy Mackinac, they score! Morgan Riley! Mo, Mo, Mo Riley! The Leafs have won it! They're going to the second round! Do you believe this? Holy Mackinac! The sickest Toronto Maple Leafs podcast. It's gonna be sick. Welcome to episode two, Leafs Talk, ladies and gentlemen. I can't believe I'm saying this, but we have some games to talk about. Not quite the season, but the preseason at that. And we have quite a few things to talk about. There was two games, not just one. There was two, a back-to-back against the Ontario rival, the Ottawa Senators. As you guys know, the preseason, it ain't the full roster. In the first game, key players that showed up were Nylander, Morgan Riley, Matthew Nyes, and the newly sought-after Max Domi. And Max Domi made a mark pretty damn early, just 13 seconds into the game, the guy's in the box. First period really did not go the Leafs' way. The Senators showed up on time, and the Leafs did not. Although they didn't capitalize on this penalty from the Leafs, we did end up taking another one just about eight minutes later, and the Senators do finally capitalize by crashing the net and potting it in. one nothing Senators, power play goal. And it doesn't exactly go better from there because on the Senators, once again, Tim Stutzla, by the way, oh, that guy's going to be an absolute masterpiece to watch. He snipes it towards the end of the period after more penalty trouble. Two nothing Senators. And here we are again, down in the game, not starting on time, not showing up when the game actually starts. Leafs go into first intermission down two to nothing. It's fine, though. It's just the first period. Head into the intermission, reset, and come back out strong into the second. And as soon as it starts, Timothy Lilligren, into the board. I thought that guy absolutely shattered his kneecap. It was an accidental, like, kind of trip, if you want to call it, where he flew into the board. And I really like Lilligren, and I really didn't like seeing Lilligren hit the boards like that. I don't think he should be getting that close with it. But luckily, he stays on the ice, and everything is fine after that. Unlike the first period where the Leafs did not show up to play, they start applying pressure in the second period. They're starting to apply. They're getting chances, not quite capitalizing until there's a face-off in the offensive zone. The Leafs win it back from the right side over to the left, and something we never saw enough of from this Leafs team, shots from the point. They get it done. William Lagesson snipes it. It's 2-1. Deficit cut in half. So the first period was all Sens power plays. The second period, flip the script. It's the Leafs getting a lot of man advantages. Matter of fact, we had about three to four penalties in, or sorry, power plays in a row, which ended up leading to a five on three, which had a god awful start. However, with one second remaining, very similar to the first goal, bring it back to the right side point over to the left. And another shot from the point, Alex Steves' near replica goal. The game is tied 2-2. And we are back in the game for about 40 seconds. Tim Stutzler comes right back. 3-2. We're back down. That is how the game would head into the second intermission. Third period, not a whole lot happening. The sense kind of shut it down. The Leafs tried to generate, but there just wasn't a whole lot. Leafs lose their first preseason game. 3-2 3-2 to two over the Ottawa Senators. So here were my takeaways from game one. Essentially, the result of the game, not that important. Matter of fact, not important at all. It is the preseason. That's not what you're looking for. But the key takeaways, I like the pace of the game. I thought there was a lot of different players. And actually, both teams in general had good pace to the game, which is something you like to see heading into the season. 
something I really, really liked from this game from the Leafs, and it's something we did not see a whole lot of in the prior seasons, shots from the point. Not complicated, not overthinking it, not too much tic-tac-toe, just a simple over on the blue line, shot on net. Goalie can see it, and I don't care who you are if you're a goalie. When you don't see the puck, you're all the same, and the puck goes in the back of the net. Several. That's actually the only way we scored this game was from point shots, so I really like that. A performance that I really enjoyed was Keith Petrozelli, the goalie. I thought that if he wasn't playing the way he was, this game was completely done after the first period. The guy is six foot six, one of the tallest goalies I've ever seen personally, and I'm I, the only one I can really think of that kind of has that look like that height was like Ben Bishop. Like you know, this guy's a big guy. He's young. He's only twenty four. I really liked his performance. Um, not sure how much more we're going to get to see of him, but it was nice to see a different goalie that had a sort of calm in the net as well and was able to keep the boys in it. That's what you want to see out of a goalie, especially um, coming into a new season, you know, seeing your options. Something I did notice in the game, and this goes again for both um, both teams and something I think we should all look for, not look forward to, we should look out for during the season is uh, there was a very, very, very high penalty rate. The refs called everything from slashes to trips to shoves in the corner that were a bit late to any form of... They were calling it and they were calling everything. I think there was something like eight to ten power play or penalties called from the first and second period alone, both teams combined. So that's something we should definitely be uh, keeping our eye out on. They're probably like um, testing kind of see like where they are on the spectrum of like, what do we call? What do we not? What's a penalty? What isn't? You always see that in the preseason where they tend to call some more. Uh, they tend to give more penalties in the preseason just to kind of get a feel of, okay, this is how we're going to run this year. Expect this. So that's something I notice. Um, and a final thing that I'm going to end the game one takeaways on is the fact that they did not start on time. Um, this was something we have seen many, many, many times. And again, it's just a preseason. It's not a big deal. It's just something I noticed. But starting on time, I really, really hope that it's not something I'm going to be repeating this year because we have repeated it many, 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 many times in the past. And it's not something I want to talk about again. Um, starting on time should be a precedent when you're in the NHL. This is a professional league. You have to be ready. Uh, it's your job to be ready, to be prepared for these games. So starting on time should be a precedent from the get-go. It's not something we should have to complain to get. All in all, those were my takeaways from game one. Now on to the recap of game number two, which happened on the following night, Monday night. Let's get to it. Second game of the back-to-back. -back. This roster looked a lot different than it did in the first game. Key players starting were Austin Matthews, Mitch Marner. We finally get to see a little gist of what John Klingberg and Tyler Bertuzzi, a.k.a. nephew Tyler, are going to provide. Got a little glimpse to see what they're capable of. Um, but those were the big players that started for the Leafs in this game. However, regardless of all the changes, who was in, who was out, the game starts the exact same way. The Leafs do not start on time, and they go down one nothing early on into the game. And quite frankly, you'd expect it. You know, they're down by one. It's how the last game started. They're going to stick with it. It'll be fine. They're going to tie. No, two nothing Senators. Bang, bang. Once again, the second game of a back to back, the exact same start as the first one. Leafs are down two nothing yet again, finding themselves another hole that they dug themselves and that they have to get out of. Luckily, Easton Cowan, the Leafs' first round pick in the 2023 NHL draft, played in this game. And I really, Really liked what I saw. I'm not going to lie. The kid looked like he was just a part of the team and that it's been a while. Like, he looked like he belonged there. I really enjoyed his pace. I really enjoyed his intensity. And I really, I really, really noticed his positioning was, like, on par. It was perfect. He was exactly where he needed to be at all times or for the most part. And he actually is the player who got the Leafs on the board, scoring a power play goal, although it had an abysmal start to it. They finally get settled into the zone. They get a tic-tac-toe going, and Easton Cowan down the middle in the slot. Boom. It's 2-1. Leafs are on the board. Cue 
the comeback. Not quite. Once again, quick answer from the Senators. The same way in the first game. This is something we've seen a lot with Toronto, where they put in a lot of work. They inch back into the game. They inch back into the game. They finally get a goal. And immediately after, when they have to keep the pressure, the other team answers within about a minute. We saw it in the season. We saw it in the playoffs. And we see it in this game again. You have to follow up a shift where you score. You have to follow that up strong, especially if you're losing. You have to. Um, because the other team is going to answer. They're going to try to answer. You have to avoid that happening so you keep on the comeback. But that's not what happened. The Senators managed to get another one, recreating the two-goal lead for the Senators or two-goal deficit for the Leafs. However, the first period was pretty much this entire game because the Leafs come back and score again with just about, I want to say, I think it was two minutes. The Leafs make it 3-2, so now we're back down by one. And now it is important that this time they stick with it and that they don't let the Senators pop one back in before the end of the period. And luckily, it heads into intermission, 3-2 to two for the Senators. Leafs only down by one. Into the second period, this period resembled a lot more of the third period of the first game in the sense where it was a lot of neutral zone playing. It was a lot of board battling. Not a whole lot going on. It's very back and forth. No one really able to establish zone time either on the Senators or the Leafs. It was really just on one side, back to another, back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And so no goals being scored in the second period. Still, again, a good pace to the game. Uh, a lot more neutral play, which is something we're going to probably be seeing a lot more of in a regular season game. But this is the players settling in and just kind of finding their groove into this one. So the game goes into the second intermission. Same score as the end of the first, 3-2 to two for the Ottawa Senators. On to the third period. The Leafs need to find a way to tie this game. So you'd expect them to come into the third period with fire, and they don't. Very slow start. Very, very, very slow start. First five minutes, they, the passes were not connecting by any means. Players looked very, like, kerfuffled, like, all over the place. But luckily, five minutes go by. The Leafs finally start to settle in once again. And the play keeps on. Pressure keeps being placed. They keep going. And a name I mentioned before, Easton Cowan. I think he sparked the real... Uh, beginning of the pressure of the Leafs in the third period where he gets a cross ice pass to center ice, skates it in from the left side, crashes the net with a guy on him, the pressure the whole time. He outskates him, gets a great opportunity. It does not result in a goal, but like I said, I think the Leafs picked up on this and they ended up finding a lot more zone time, a lot more established zone time, that is, and it gave them a chance to tie the game. However, Late into the period, the Ottawa Senators, with 30 seconds left, take a penalty. Another situation for the Leafs here. Down by one, an opportunity is given to you. Now you have to rise to the occasion and make use of it. And luckily, this time they do. With only five seconds left in the game, there's a bunch of passes going on. They're trying to get anything on net. And Mitch Marner, my favorite Leaf personally, I think the heart of this team, Puts it in the back of the net. The game is tied 3-3, and the Leafs have a chance of winning this game and completing the comeback. That takes us into overtime. Obviously, nothing a whole lot you can really do here. It's three on three. It's back and forth. Eventually, someone's going to score one, and the Senators do. Jacob Chikrin scores his second goal of the game as the Senators take the second part of a back-to-back 4-3 -to -back, in overtime to sweep the Leafs in the two game series. So that does it for the game two recap. Here were my greatest takeaways and key points that I noticed throughout the game. As you guys saw me mention throughout the recap, Easton Cowan was a name that came up a lot. I really enjoyed watching him. Obviously, I'm not totally certain that this guy is actually going to get to see the ice this season in terms of having a roster spot full time on the Leafs, but I'm sure they'll be able to plug him in every now and again. As you guys know, injuries are very very 
bound to happen. It's just going to happen 82 games as many games. And I would not mind to see what this kid can do. He's very young. Don't want to burn him out. Don't want to burn any years of his ELC either. But um, I really liked the pace he brought to this game. I thought he was playing with a lot of meaning. Um, he was really playing with a lot of heart as well. He obviously doesn't have very much size. But he was very exciting to watch. He was at the right place at the right time. He was able to generate uh, momentum for the Leafs, which I thought was very important. So I want to see more out of this kid. He was probably, in my opinion, the first star of the game for the Leafs. Something else I really noticed was the first line chemistry of Austin Matthews, Mitch Marner, and Tyler Bertuzzi. This was the first time they played together in an actual organized hockey game. And it looked like they'd been there before. It just looked like they knew where they were going to be. They were able to pass to each other, kind of. There was a lot of tic-tac-toes that it was like, I know you're going to be there. That that uh, pass is going all over the place. But getting tape to tape, getting a lot of zone time, and just kind of finding their identity on that line, I think that line has a lot of potential to be an absolutely destructive and lethal weapon for this team. And I hope it is. You're looking at, if my math does me right, looking at about like just under $30 million on that line, 27, somewhere in there. So they need to be lethal. There's not really a choice there. They need to be lethal for the Leafs. But I really like what I saw in terms of the chemistry. Um, in the first two games, I also mentioned this in the first, uh, the power play was very hard to read. Um, they had moments that were very solid. They had moments that was like, ugh. Like, are they even on a power play? But again, it's the preseason. Um, it was different rosters. It's not their full roster playing. It's going to be a little bit weird for these players to try to grow their chemistry like this early on. It's normal. There was some good moments of it. They did have another power play goal in this one. But again, there was also things I've noticed from the past seasons where there's just a bit too much. Like, it's too stale entering the zone sometimes so that if they, if they don't break through early it's going to be very hard for them to make any use of that power play so that's something i noticed and the last takeaway i have from the game is not starting on time yet again the leafs start into this game it's a different night they just went down to nothing in the last game so you'd expect them to start differently and they don't they didn't show up on time they go down early again and they have to fight their way back into it. Something I did enjoy was the fact that they showed character and didn't give up on the game. But again, it's not something I want to get used to. I don't want to be watching this team when they're down all the time. I want them to get comfortable holding a lead and shutting the game down rather than having to constantly claw back. Because when the games matter, especially in the playoffs, it's a lot harder to cue a comeback every single game. And as a matter of fact, it's a lot harder to win a series when you're always down by a goal in a game. I'd much rather you have the lead and learn how to protect it rather than give goals up early and have to learn how to constantly fight back. So those were my greatest key takeaways from game numbers one and number two. Now, what does this all mean? Well, it doesn't mean a whole lot. It is the preseason. Obviously, we're looking for something to talk about, but the preseason is a lot more result-oriented and a lot more focus on looking at key aspects and what I really enjoy the most about the preseason is that we get a chance to see what we have in the reserves in the players on the rise our rookies and just to kind of see what options we have outside of our full roster obviously the top line is not something I'm focusing on um, in the preseason games so players like Marner Matthews Nylander players like that I'm not too worried about it. All you want to see is just that they have pace to their game, which I thought they showed. Um, but something I really enjoyed watching was the rookies and the young players, players like Easton Cowan, players like Petrozelli. Uh, I really liked Nyes in the first game as well. Didn't talk about that a whole lot. But I really think that um, I'm just excited that hockey's back. To be quite frank with you guys, I'm just very, very excited that hockey is back that we have games to watch, that we have games to talk about. Um, obviously, we're all itching for the season to start, and the preseason is very important. It gives the players a chance to warm up. And something I really want to actually talk about is the fact that I've heard a lot of people say that the preseason is completely useless and not important. And to a certain degree, I kind of agree with you in the sense that, yes, whether you win or like winning and losing doesn't matter in the preseason. 
But there are players fighting to make a mark in their career and to show the teams who they are. So these are some really, really important games for some of these rookies and players just fighting for a roster spot or trying to get some level of play time. I think it actually is really important for some of these guys. Like these are almost career games for some of these players. If they put up a good performance and they kind of leave a mark on the coach or the management, they might actually get a shot down the line. That's what's really exciting to watch about the preseason. And we saw that on both ends. The Senators had some really good players, uh, sorry, good performances, and as well as the Leafs. Um, John Klingberg, again, it's a preseason, so I don't want to get into it a whole lot. Kind of weird to watch. I didn't really know what to make of it. Um, just not a whole lot happening. I don't really expect a whole lot from him, at least in the defensive part of the game. He is more brought in for another offensive aspect. Um, but it is another offensive piece that the Leafs can use. I mean, you never have too much offense. Goals are always going to be needed. So uh, John Klingberg, not probably my most underwhelming reaction was seeing him but again it doesn't really mean a whole lot it's the preseason at the end of the day you just don't want these players getting hurt and you just want them to get some ice time um so that was a takeaway from that but for real i have to say from both game one and two the player that stood out to me the most was easton cowan i really like what this kid showed um if this is a glimpse of something he'll be capable of especially in growing his game over time I really think that he has a potential shot of eventually making the roster. Again, I'm not saying this year, but I'm saying down the line. As I mentioned, it's very important to see what we have. And especially for a Leafs team who has such high salary players, it is very important that we are able to develop players um, to turn into full-time players because they don't cost a lot, especially early on in their careers, on their ELCs. You need to have players to come up like that if you are to build a team with players who are also getting paid 10 million, uh, 11 million, Matthews, Marner, Nylander, all of these guys. You need to have these rookies who are going to be able to show up um, on a low salary while also making an instant impact. I think Cowan can definitely do bring in that impact while also not restricting the salary. Um, I really enjoyed his intensity to the game. I really enjoyed how hungry he looked. I think that's something the Leafs have always been looking for, someone who is hungry. I think he brought that. I really enjoyed his performance. Um, in the first game, I'd say the biggest takeaway I had was probably Petrozelli, to be completely frank. I thought he kept it a game. I thought that he's massive. He is massive. Six foot six. The guy can go and play basketball if he wanted to, but he decided to be a goalie and to stop pucks. And honestly, when you're that big, might as well give it a shot. I liked his performance in that one. Um, but overall, don't want to get too, too, too into it, although I kind of did, because it is the preseason, and I'm just really, really excited to be talking hockey again and just to have the NHL back on the map. The summer is finally coming to an end. We're finally gearing up for the NHL season, and I cannot wait to see more games happen. Right before I end this episode, I once again want to take a moment to say thank you guys so much for the support you guys showed in the first episode, and thank you to all of you who listened into this one as well. I want to end this podcast on a question because I really want to hear your guys' thoughts as well. I really want there to be a community aspect to this podcast because that's what really means a lot to me. So my question for you to end this podcast is, which Leaf were you most excited or most surprised by in these first two preseason games? Let me know down in the comment section below. Feel free to reach out to us on Instagram as well, or myself on TikTok, wherever is easier for you, or even in the YouTube comment section. But guys, that is going to be the end of episode two. Stay tuned. There is another game this Wednesday. We're going to be recapping it likely on an episode Thursday. So thank you very much for tuning in. I love y'all. Stay safe. Stay humble. Producer, roll the outro. I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace out. And that's a wrap. Hope you don't miss us too much until next time. Follow the Sick Podcast with That Leafs Fan on YouTube, Facebook. 
Google Play, and Apple Podcasts.